Good morning, good morning, Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church family and friends. This is your boy, Pastor Rod, once again, uh, thanking the Lord for another day. Let's let's uh, ask the Lord's blessing on our time this morning. Father God, thank you for this day. Lord, a day that was not promised to us, dear Heavenly Father, but you saw fit to touch us with the fingertip of your love and breathe the breath of life in us one more time. Lord, for that, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you for blessing us in spite of us, dear Lord. We thank you, Lord, for looking beyond our faults, meeting us at our needs. Lord, we thank you just to thank you, Heavenly Father, because you're God all by yourself. In spite of everything that's going on in us and around us, Heavenly Father, Lord, we know that you love us so much, Heavenly Father, that you sent your son to the cross to die for every sin that we thought about committing, dear Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for his innocent blood that was shed, Heavenly Father, to cover us, dear Lord. Those who believe, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Heavenly Father. We love you. We honor you today. You're worthy of all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord, I ask that you bless your preacher right now, Heavenly Father, as I come and bring forth your word today, dear Heavenly Father. Let your word go forth, dear Heavenly Father, and not come back to your void as your word says, dear Lord. We love you. We honor you. Bless you today, dear Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. Uh, beginning at verse number nine, beginning at verse number nine, when you find it, you'll find these words recorded. It says, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, ye the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man, which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that we are freely given to us of God. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, verse 13 says, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, but they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. I want to speak for a few moments as the Holy Ghost has guided. I want to talk about God's spiritual secrets. God's spiritual secrets. During Paul's second journey that is recorded in the book of Acts chapter number 16, he made a stop in the city of Corinth, or the city of Corinth. Uh, Corinth was the capital of Achaia, of Greece. Corinth at this time was known for three things. Watch this. First, they were known for their wealth and their commerce. Second, it was known for its celebrated view of Greek philosophy. And third, they were known for its gross immorality. It was a place of open, unbridled immor immorality, wealth and commerce, and the forte of Greek philosophy and rhetoric reputation. Think about it. Open immorality was an infamy during the time of Paul's journey. And there the Lord, and there the Lord empowered Paul to plant a church in a place that was unshamedly ungodly, open immoral catch that church, it was open immorality. And yet the Holy Spirit empowered the Apostle Paul to plant a church in a place that was unholy. He planted a church that was unholy, unashamedly unholy. He planted a church that was completely ungodly. It was a place that lifted up human logic, polytheism, which is the belief in more than one God, and here comes this radical for Christ on his first time there planting a church in a place where the church had no presence, no power, and no voice. So ladies and gentlemen, watch this, watch this. If this was the origin of the context in which the church was planted, then automatically it says to us that the church will always be in conflict with the cultural when the church is actually being the church. Uh -huh. Watch this. When we are, are the light in darkness, the salt of the earth, when we are right in the wrong, it is not designed for us, the church, 
to be in agreement with culture. It is designed for us to be the ops to co to a conflicting, I mean, culture. We are to be the opposition to culture. I want to get this down. There are things that the church purports that will never come into agreement with the culture, community, and the society which they purport. If it does, then we lose our distinction of being the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. And thus Paul has now written a book written a book back to the church that he planted because he is disturbed to find out that the church in which he, he planted in an ungodly culture has now been infiltrated, <laughs> has now been infiltrated and infected by the carnality of the community. Mm. So he writes to that church and says that though you are spiritual, you are still yet carnal. He, he addresses them as such in, in, in chapter three, because at the which is the paradox of the whole book. Because because but watch this, uh, this was a church which flowed with a buffet of spiritual gifts. Yeah, yeah, they spoke in tongues, they laid hands, they had healings, they 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 had it all, but yet they were carnal. Which means they were acting like church folk at church, but there was no distinction nor difference uh, uh, about them when they was outside of the church. Oh, I want you to catch that now. Yeah, they acted like they were saved. They acted like believers in church, but outside the church. They acted like everybody else in the community. Sounds familiar, don't it? Sounds like the church of the day. We act like church on Sunday, but we can't, we can't find no real believers during the rest of the week because we're out there shaking what mama gave you and out there doing everything else that everybody in the community is doing. All right, I know you probably ain't going to like me today, but I got to teach what the Lord placed on me to teach today. So watch this. So Paul rehearses with them the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And that is really what this text is all about. Because if you read the context again, you will see that the Holy Spirit is mentioned six times within this context. Which suggests to us that whenever the subject matter is repeated within the context of the text, it gives a clue as to what the text is really about. So Paul is, uh, is letting us know that the Holy Spirit is not just the power to shout, not just the power to speak in tongues, not just the power to throw oil, power to preach, power to pray and teach, to conduct yourself in the church. But the Holy Spirit is, when you really have him, will influence your walk. It will influence your talk outside the church. Mm -hmm. Paul shares with them that the Holy Spirit is God's presence inside of us without an on and off switch based upon how much we go to church. <laughs> Excuse me. So let me watch this. Let me pause parenthetically and say, Church, the Holy Spirit is three persons of the Trinity. The very Spirit of Jesus Christ, which make up three presents in one God. So to disconnect from one is to disconnect from them all. So so let me see. Uh let me see if I can preach it so you can reach it. Uh if you don't want Jesus, then you don't want God. If you want Jesus but don't want the Holy Spirit, then you don't want Jesus or God. You can't, they come as a package deal. You can't separate neither one of them. You got to accept all three because all three are God. Not a God, they are the one God. Watch this, you don't believe me? Because come in, come in, come in, come in, first John chapter number five, verse seven says, there are three that bear record in heaven, the father, the word, and the spirit, and they are one. Jesus got baptized in Matthew chapter number three and the father spoke from heaven. The son was in the water and the spirit showed up in the form of a dove. Genesis chapter one says, let us make man in our image and our likeness. It's not three gods. It's three persons in one God. And to reject one is to reject all three. So might I suggest to you uh, that the uh, doctrinal ministry of the Holy Spirit is to be to us what Christ was to his disciples. Uh -huh. Come on, come on, lean in closer here, lean in closer here. Uh -huh. Jesus Christ was the physical presence of God in the earth. Therefore, the Holy Spirit is the spiritual presence of God in light of his physical absence. Yes, yes. The Holy Spirit is to us what Christ was to his disciples. It is not like God to leave us comfortless because he says, I must go that the comforter might come. 
He says, I'm going to give you my spiritual presence so that the 12 men don't think that they had exclusive rights to say that they are the only ones in human history that interacted with God. Because you who are after Christ have him on the inside. We who are after Christ have him on the inside. They had him with them. We have him on the inside of us. The very presence of God in us while God and Christ over us. Ah, uh, you got to catch that. The very spirit of God on the inside of us. While God the Father and God the Son watch over us. Yeah, uh-huh. They may not be, they might be for all of us, but for the few of us that have the fire on the inside, there is something on the inside of us that cannot be accounted for by human logic, by education, by your family. It is the presence of the almighty God on the inside and it's making us aware of the things of God, giving you something that you can't get if it wasn't for Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So can, 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 I, can I ask you a question this morning? Can I ask you this question this morning? Let me ask this question. The question I'm asking, who got the Holy Spirit? And do you really have it? Now, see, see, because you don't have to have the Holy Spirit to shout. No, no, no. Just because you shout don't mean you have the Holy Ghost. Because demons can shout. Demons can run. Demons know God better than some of us. As a matter of fact, some of us shout just to exercise the hell out of us anyway. But when you really have the Holy Ghost, when you really have the Holy Ghost, you pray for those who despitefully use you. You bless those who curse you. And the Lord instructs you from the inside out how to handle the outside of the sanctuary. Uh, Paul tells us, Paul tells us that, that when you got him on the inside, you didn't get him subsequently to get saved. Unlike what some folk teach. No, no, the Holy Ghost comes with batteries already included. Yeah, yeah, you remember uh, back in the day, back in the day, back in our day when we was younger, when you went out and bought toys, you bought toys, but you also had the batteries. <laughs> you had to go buy the batteries. You had to, you know, the batteries weren't always included. The batteries were separate. But, but, but with the Holy Ghost, you get the batteries already included. Yes, 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 yes. The batteries come uh, already in the package. It, 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 when, when Jesus bought you with his blood, he had already put the power in the package. So when you got saved, you got you got saved and you got the Holy Ghost power. Uh yeah. Uh, matter, matter of fact, matter of fact, you wouldn't be saved if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost. Let me just go and put that out there. You wouldn't be saved if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost. But here's the good news. Here's the good news. When you got the Holy Ghost on the inside, Paul says the Holy Spirit is the one who lets you know, who lets you in on God's secrets. The Holy Spirit is the one who lets you know. God's secrets. Look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. Verse 9, he says that there are things that your eyes haven't seen, your ear has not heard, and has not entered into the heart of men that God has prepared for them who love him. Look, now watch this. Watch this. Because if you look at that phrase, it is written. Every time you see the phrase, the writer is quoting something from the Old Testament because the New Testament is revelation, the fulfillment of the Old Testament. And the best way to verify the Bible is, by, is with the Bible. That's why you got to be careful, be careful when folks say, when folks tell you that they heard from the Lord, but they don't read the Bible. No, no, you ain't heard from the Lord and you don't know what the Bible, and you don't know the Bible because you can't tell me what God said, what God is saying if you don't know what he has already said. Uh, let me say that again. You can't tell me what God is saying if you don't know what God has already said. Let me let me let me go and sip my coffee while you while you marinate on earth. Huh. Paul is not giving us his own consensus. He is being led by scripture as the Holy Spirit is revealing it to him to establish his point. So watch this. Your question to me is is, is this. What is he quoting, Pastor? Well, I'm glad you asked. I like it when you ask questions. Paul is actually quoted Isaiah chapter 64, verse 4, but he doesn't quote it uh, verbatim. Watch this. He don't quote it verbatim. Because if you look at Isaiah chapter 64, verse 4, you will discover that 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and 9 is not an exact quote. Because Isaiah 64, 4 says, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, heard the things God has prepared for those who wait for him. And the reason it says wait for him is because it is a, a prophetic utterance for the advent of Christ. But Paul can't use it in that context because Paul is after Christ. Ah, because Christ had already come and left. 
Now Paul's here. He ain't waiting on Jesus to show up. Jesus has already come, died, rose, and went back to heaven. So by spiritual authority given to him, this is how Paul translated it to us. I haven't seen, ear haven't heard, neither has entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Mm -hmm. So that's not exact. That's not in Isaiah chapter 64, verse 4, because Paul is not in the advent side of Christ. He's on the ascension side of Christ. Therefore, he suggests to us that when we love the Lord and got the Holy Spirit on the inside, God has some stuff for you that I haven't seen, ear haven't heard, and neither has entered into the hearts of men. God got some, some secrets. God got some secret stuff for you that your eye haven't seen. That your ear hasn't heard. Neither has entered into the heart of men. God has some stuff for you that he ain't told nobody. See, church folk don't know when to shout. Paul says, Paul says, it. Paul says, okay, let me show you. If you haven't heard about it, that means he got some stuff that's beyond your faith to apply it. Ah, because faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But it's some stuff that God has for you that has nothing to do with your faith. <laughs> yeah, it has nothing to do with your faith, which means he got some stuff for you that whether you believe it or not, you still going to get it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, Jesus. It's not whether you believe it or not because it's already been ordained for your life and it's beyond your faith. See, your problem is, and most of our problem is, we only shout about stuff we seen. <laughs> uh, only, we only shout about stuff you believe God for, but... The God I serve, the God I serve is not limited to what I believe. No, 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 no. The God I serve can do exceedingly and abundantly above all I can ask or think. Come on, that's Bible. So whether you believe it or not, it doesn't matter if it's already been ordained by God. But if it's already been ordained for your life, God still got it for your life. Uh, and see, 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 so... I mean, I gotta ask a question. Is there anybody else on this on this broadcast? Anybody else uh, on this channel besides me that know uh, 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 you didn't pray for some of the stuff, but God gave it to you anyway? I, 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 I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You got a job, you know you wasn't qualified for. You got a raise, you know you didn't earn. You drive a car that's above your pay status. You a home or an apartment that you know you shouldn't have, but God has some stuff for you that was beyond your faith to apply it. Ah, he says, it is beyond sight. It is beyond your hearing. But watch this. It's some stuff that God hadn't told anybody else about either. Ah, it has not entered into the hearts of men. God got some stuff for you that he hasn't let anyone else in on. Which means it's only stuff that God knows about and he's not going to confirm it through somebody else. No, because even God knows how to keep secrets. <laughs> he waits on the right time, the right place, under the right context to disclose what he's got for you because he's already know that you got some folk that don't like you and they don't know what's coming for you. No, no, you got folks that don't like you. You haven't even got your blessing yet, but they still don't like you. They, they don't know what God going to do for you, but they hate the sound of your name. <laughs> they hate the influence of your presence. They just hate you for being you. Mm, 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 mm. But watch this. But God loves us so much that he even keeps some stuff from us because he even keeps stuff from folks who claim they love you. Mm, God loves you so much that he even keeps some stuff from you. <laughs> God got a blessing for some of you, but he keeps it from you because he knows some of y'all talk too much. <laughs> Boy, when I tell you when I was studying this text, it... it, it, it it not only made me laugh, but it also made me cry. Because God, I, I, if anybody knows, Pastor Bates always says, God play too much. God play too much. But when I was studying this text, found out that God got some stuff for us, and he ain't going to even tell us about it because some of us talk too much. Mm. <laughs> God loves us so much. And the only way that we're going to get him is that he has to spend, he has to spend a season Keeping them from us. Watch this because it says, I haven't seen, which means it's not visible. It hasn't heard. It's not spiritual. Hasn't been conceived in the heart of man. God says, I hadn't told anybody else about it. So watch this. God says, the only way you're going to know 
what he got for you is that if you got the Holy Ghost. Ah. Listen to what he said. He said, how does a man know what's in a man unless he's the, he's the man's spirit? Only your spirit in you knows everything that goes on in you. But he says the same thing works for God. The Holy Ghost searches the deep things of God because only the Holy Ghost knows everything that's going on inside of God because he's God. Uh, so therefore, if the Holy Ghost is in you, the Holy Ghost is in you to let you know what's going on in, on the inside of God. And one reason that you got the Holy Ghost is that the Holy Ghost reveals to you at the proper time what God got for you, which is always in the which has always been in the being of God. Ah, I, 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 I know you got it. I know you got it because I, I know you got a question because I can feel it through the monitor. I can feel it through the monitor. Watch this. You're saying, preacher, well, when is it that time? <laughs> when will God reveal it to me? Well, if you read verse six through eight, he literally says, we will, we reveal wisdom to them that are perfect. All right. The word perfect doesn't mean airless or without fault. It means in the Greek, when you complete or mature. <laughs> okay, let's do a little Bible study. Let's do a little Bible study right here. God is ready to reveal some things to you faster, the faster that you mature, the faster that you grow up. It literally means the less carnal you are, the more sensitive you become to the spirit. Okay, you missed it. I saw it go by you. You missed it. I saw it go by you. Watch this. Uh, 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 uh. When you stop acting like a child, he is ready to disclose what he had for you because just like a good parent, you don't give strong meat to a child. They have to mature to a point that they be able to digest that type of meat. Same with a spiritual child. God, God knows that you're not able to digest that kind of stuff right now, so God waits for you to mature. Mm. And see, see, watch this. Well, <laughs> watch this, because people often say, let me go to church and see what God has for me today. But the reality is God is waiting for you to mature and grow up and stop being so carnal. If that's the case, then ask yourself this question. What have you missed out on because you've been so carnal? Or because you've been doing things your own way. Ah, you've been so busy in everybody else's business and haven't taken time to mind your own. Ah, have been so busy acting, acting a fool to no end. What have you missed out on? Huh? Ah. What have you missed out on while God was waiting for us to mature, waiting for you to grow up? Hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on, hold on. He says, he says now, when you get it, don't expect people to understand it. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. I'm, I, I, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Look at verse 14. He says, the natural mind cannot comprehend what I'm about to do for you, so stop looking for other folks to celebrate it. <sighs> stop looking for other folks to shout about it, because if they ain't got the Holy Ghost, they ain't going to know that it came from God anyway. Look at what he said. He says, I'm comparing spiritual things. I'm comparing spiritual things with spiritual folks. The word compare literally translates to mean combine. God is saying, I'm putting spiritual things with spiritual people because spiritual people fit spiritual things. And maybe that explains why some of your relationships are messed up because you are in a relationship with somebody that's carnal. Ooh, I knew it was going to get hot in here today. Let me grab a towel. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Ah, you being spiritual, but you're in a relationship with somebody carnal. Maybe that's why it's so hard to get along with folks that you work with, because you're spiritual and they're carnal. Maybe that's why you have some stuff going on in your spirit, but you can't talk to nobody about it because your friends only relate to your sinful side. Okay, or maybe that's just me. But I'm just, I, I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Maybe, just maybe. Maybe, just maybe. They only know your sinful side and know nothing about your spiritual side. Ah. So you already know that they can't connect to what you're talking about. So that's why you don't talk about it. 
But what God is doing in your life, you need some spiritual friends. You need some folk that got the Holy Ghost because what God is doing in your life, when it comes to pass, you are going to lose some friends. You're going to lose some family members. You're going to lose some loved ones. You're going to lose some relationships because they don't have the Holy Ghost. The natural mind cannot understand it, cannot comprehend the things of the spirit. It is foolishness to them because it only it can only be spiritually discerned. Ah, you can get the things God has for you if you got the Holy Ghost and, and you got maturity and you're disciplined enough to live with it by yourself. <laughs> I knew some of y'all, I knew some of y'all wasn't going to like that because a lot of y'all ain't pregnant yet. A lot of us ain't pregnant yet. Ah, <laughs> yeah, you don't have something on the inside of you where your body has to adjust to it all by yourself. Yeah, when it starts to move and shift, it changes your walk. You have to adjust to it all by yourself. It starts to change your talk. It starts to change your diet. It starts to change your atmosphere. Uh, you know, if, if you're a lady and you're looking at this, you know what I'm talking about, If you, especially if you're a mother. Because when you're pregnant on the inside, uh, it, it changes how you eat. It changes how you move. It changes the atmosphere all around you. Because when the baby start kicking, Huh? You carrying it all by yourself and nobody else can really understand what's going on because it's going on inside of you. That's the same way with the Holy Spirit. Boy, when the Holy when you really got the Holy Spirit, it changes your walk. It changes your talk. It changes your mood. It changes your atmosphere because when it starts moving on the inside, you got to carry it around and adjust to it all by yourself. Uh, all I'm trying to tell you is this. When you're really walking by the Spirit, it is just as much a faith walk as it is in believing with Jesus. but you, Because you can't believe in Jesus in bulk. Mm -mm. You have to believe. You have to believe him in your heart. You have to confess him with your mouth. And you also have to trust him in your heart. Ah. See, I already know this ain't going to mean much to much. Uh, this ain't going to mean much to some of y'all. But to, for those of us who sense that God is doing something for you, you know that there's more to your life than where you are right now. I, 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 I kind of wish I had a church right now so I could see see your face. If you know God is doing more for you, got something more for you than where you are right now. Ah, you know exactly what it is. You don't know what, exactly what it is, but you're so uncomfortable with where you are right now that God has got you in a place where he wants you to be in a season of frustration until you finally say, now, Lord, what things do you have for me? I'm ready to mature. I'm ready to grow up now. But here's the good news. Here's the good news. Here's the good news. Whatever he has for you, God kept it from everybody else. And at the right time, he got things prepared. Uh, okay, watch this. Watch this. I'm, 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 I'm hearing it to my coach. It says, it says he got things prepared. Okay, if you can read the Bible, if you can read the Bible, you should have shouted when the text says, when the text says, he got things prepared. Because the word prepared is in past tense. Which means the stuff he has for you, he ain't still working on. It's already done. It's already finished. It's already completed. It's not something God is still working on. He's already completed. And by the time it gets to you, you have to catch up with what he already finished. Ah, because it's a finished work. You got to understand it. It's a finished work. He's not still working on it. You ought to tell somebody <laughs> that I'm on my way to a finished work. The Bible even tells us he that has begun a good work in you shall perform it to, at the end of time. At the, perform it. The day of Jesus Christ. Uh, the day you mature to understand that you got the Holy Spirit in you. God has already completed the work. Uh, it, 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 it literally means God had already finished your not yet. <laughs> Why are you in your right now? <laughs> oh my God. And, and see, here's what here's what bothered me. Here's what bothered me. Here's what bothered me. Please deliver me. Please. Please deliver me from these preachers and speakers who always talk about God is getting ready to do something. Uh, God ain't getting ready to do nothing. He's already finished the work. 
God already did what he said he was going to do. He's just waiting for us to grow up. I'll, I'll leave you with this thought. I'll leave you with this thought. What is instant in eternity is a process in time. What is instant in eternity is a process in time. Okay. Let me show you the process and then and I'm gone. Revelation chapter 13 verse 8 says, He was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. But it took 42 generations. It took a virgin girl who had never been touched. 12 years before he went to the temple to teach. Another 18 years before he opened up his public ministry. Three years to walk with 12 men to get them ready. And then in AD 33, he stands on Calvary's hill, dies for the sins of the world. Three days later, he rose from the grave, not as a weakling, but with all power in his hand. 50 days later, he sends the Holy Ghost to reside and preside on the inside of us. And here we are in 2021. He already done it in eternity, but it took a process in time. <sighs> that just means, Turk, what God has for you is already done. He just waiting for us to mature, to grow up. He was slain from the foundation of the world. <laughs> Which means when he rose, it was already prepared. The, the Bible tells us that before you was in your mother's womb, God knew you. God had things prepared for you before you even got here. But now that you're here, God is waiting for you to mature, to grow up so he can give it to you. I don't know about you, but as I said, as I was studying this word, I had to look back on some of the stuff that I missed out on. What could I have missed out on by God, by not growing up faster, by not maturing faster? Ask yourself that question. If you don't get anything else out of this message today, you got the Holy Ghost. You ought to understand. You ought to understand, understand, understand that you have to be less carnal so you can be more sensitive to the things of the Spirit. And the more sensitive you get to the things of the Spirit, the more mature you become spiritually. God will start revealing stuff to you that he has for you already finished. God's got some spiritual secrets. And I don't know about you, but I want to get everything God has for me. I want to get everything that God has for me. What about you? God bless you today. God bless the church. Uh, love you. I miss you guys. Let's keep continue to keep praying for Brother Marshall, Sister Heidelberg, uh, Deacon Ward, Mom and Pop Bates. Let's keep praying for this country, for this country. Let's pray for these doctors, these doctors and these nurses that are on the front line, that's been on the front line for the past 18 months with this pandemic. Let's pray for these firefighters around here. Let's just pray. Let's just pray. Let's just focus and trust on God and watch God change things. We got to be ready. We got to be ready. We got to, we got to spiritually mature. We got to grow up. But more importantly, more importantly, we got to pray for one another. Pray for one another. God bless you. May God keep you. It's your boy, Pastor Bates. Pray for me as I pray for you. And let's watch God change things. It's your boy. I'm out.